Well, hello all. So I was on the internet for a little bit last night. I actually had some time. I was listening to the, uh, the Natural Progressive and Environmental Coffee Houses book. They had two shows last night, and I was able to listen to one most of the way and the other one off and on. Environmental Coffee House. I was listening to Sandy talk about herself as being kind of old and has been. And I thought to myself, if anybody is more relevant at this very moment, it's the environmental movement and the people that are taking their time to, to put out the information out there. And Sandy, you're hardly uh, old and, and miserable. I mean, such as myself, I really am. I have a really bad right knee. I have a horrible lower back that never heals. I have two shoulders that I can't even wear shirts for because they hurt so much from being torn rotator cuffs right here and here. And it, it, it's impossible to sleep at night because of all that pain. But you just have to keep going. You have to learn to manage the pain and know that you're doing some good. Believe me, you are doing some good. Don't think of yourself as old and has been. Think of yourself as adventurous. Man, look at, look at the adventure you're on. But one of the things that we was talked about on both these shows was sustainability. And I was amazed at how little information people have on sustainability. But let's go over on the board and fill that area in a little bit here. Sustainability. What? What does sustainability look like? So we'll just start at the beginning, wherever that is. It happens to be looking at what a futuristic city could be. Cities could hold about a million people, be in old quarries or areas that are already pre-used. This might be a futuristic layout. First of all, the black is the living area. These, these could be uh, maybe no more than 500 square feet and have uh, one bedroom. Maybe you, you could have a family one of two or th uh, three bedrooms with uh, still a small footprint for everybody. Now, when you do a system like this, and you let's say you go 40 stories high or 50 stories high or whatever you can go, there's positives and negatives for that. One of them is your footprint's very low because you're stacked one on top of each other and you're not really taking up that much ground, earth. So the, the footprint in how much clearing of the land you do is very low in this situation. So that would be sustainability. Now, another system here is manufacturing. Where are you gonna have it? Well, you could have it on the outside of the city. Now, why is that? Well, there's several reasons. First of all, if something explodes or there's a fire or something, it's accessible all the way around for fire and emergency vehicles. It's not near. You can have some space here between the living area and manufacturing. And another thing, if you were ever to get attacked by whomever or whatever, and they, they would have to get through all this heavy in industry to get to anything inside. So it's sort of like a protection around you. For the people that need walls, you're sort of making a wall around you of protection against any heavy weaponry getting into the living area. Food production would be inside, done sustainably, maybe some outside, some inside, so that you vary it around the city so that the food is just a few minutes away from the stores, which could be something like here. Store, store, store. And the food is just a block or two away. Meaning that the, the transportation, see I can't even get the damn thing closed because it hurts my shoulder. Um, the, the food is just a block or two away and you could have it where there's a conveyor belt underneath bringing the food over so there's no fossil fuel virtually being used at all. Now, you say, well, what can you do with this? There's so much you can do. Each living space can be a group, and each group is responsible for their own output, their own power output. So let's say that all these buildings, all these groups have some kind of power generation, and this group over here, as power goes out, you, these people could buy their power to run some of their stuff. And same with here, they could run and support them and they could support them. But all the power generation is, is done in the city. Same with food production. 
all done within the city. Now, let's race this and look at how we can make power, electricity. By the way, you notice there's no streets or roads or cars or freeways in a system like this. It's all mass transit. It just goes in a circle. Each one has a mass transit system in it and you can just very easily get from one place to another very quickly. So how are you going to power the city of one million? For the, the number are just out of the sky. I just pulled them out of the sky. One million sounds good. So what, how are we going to power this city of one million? Let's go over to the board and find out how we do it mostly with wind and water. That's right. That's right, water. The pink way. So, power generation. I, I showed you some of those buildings that didn't have a purpose. Well, this is what their purpose is, is to store and make power. How do you do it? All right, so the water gets pumped up to the top of the building. This could be a 60 foot high building and rather large with giant tanks. So they have to be very sturdy building of water. Now this tank goes into this, this pipe, which is the generation pipe, which is you can see here in close up. So each one of these is a water generator, just like they do at a, a dam or small rivers. They also have small generation. Each one of these creates power, which is brought through the regulator and into the battery. All right, so you got that far. So then each time it's the water gets through, it slows down by the time it gets to here, and then trickles into this tank, which gives volume to the water and, and increases the pressure and the speed at which the water comes through each tank. And you repeat this process, one, two, three, and the bottom one is four, which is the very, very large tank. So, where does the power come from right here. These battery storage, the battery storage is then taken off and run power into people's apartments and condominiums. Now let's talk about how we get the water from here to here to make the power. It just doesn't freely go up there. Okay, how do we get the water from down here up to here? Well, the same building at the top has an old-fashioned windmill inside the top. The wind comes in this direction. The wind is, pr is taken down so that the, the blade spins faster and generates more power. And then the wind exits out the back. You notice that the windmills are all inside the building. This could be a screen, a decorative screen, where you don't even know that that's a windmill. You see what I mean? It's, it's all part of the building. The top of the building will rotate to make sure that the wind is always facing this direction. Now, the windmill itself, how does it get the water from the bottom to the top? It does it the same way we did it in the 18 and 1700s with a windmill, mechanical piston driven, which actually pumps water. And it can pump it a long way, and it can pump each of these tanks full and keep it the water flowing and even if the winds stop there's enough tanks and reservoirs to continue to con to make power for quite some time and then also you have the battery backup which also will sustain you for power so we're going to go back to the future and make the old-fashioned windmills not those new ugly things but the old-fashioned ones it actually had some nice looks to it and had the power that was needed to make a piston driven pump and that is how you get the water from down here to up here you see you say well that will never work well of course it'll work it's already worked how do you think the u.s became where it is now that pump right there sustained all the water in texas oklahoma all the way to the west coast with drinking water and it was also used people don't know this to generate power it was six volts and they had six volt batteries the old old lead acid batteries that wouldn't really hold a charge very long but they were able to get their first taste of electricity in this way
before the grid came. Modernize it. Use uh, architecture to make it look invisible so you don't even know there's a wind generator there. And it's all sustainable. The water supplies the electricity. The wind supplies the water. And the battery backup supplies continuous voltage. Now, there's one more part to this whole thing. Humans will be regulated on how much power they can take from the grid. And that will be determined by each group that lives there. They will determine the laws of who gets the power and how much. There'll be some, some oversight, of course, that nobody gets uh, more power than the next. But it's self-regulation, and you don't have to deal with a power company. You, you deal with your own group of people that live in your building sector. So, as I've said, we can get out of this mess so easily. Tear down most of our old cities while we build brand new ones using recycling of the old cities in a modern way and don't keep tearing at the planet see if you live in a small apartment or or a condo you won't have any room for anything you won't need the boat the extra car or even a car period all the transportation will be supplied to you and by you contributing your power to the system you can get free rides on the system it, it's nothing but easy to fix these problems. Yeah, it's going to take serious money and a lot of work. A lot of human power, meaning a lot of work for a lot of people to, to change this over. But this is sustainable. This is a definite sustainable system. And it's all city. And you could have them in the old gray zones of where old cities were or quarries or something like that. Airports, that kind of thing. We'll get more into this down the road. But as I've said, there are fixes that are already proven. You just have to rework things a little bit, and we're there. The requirement for power might be 7 watts for 24 hours or 10 watts, whatever you guys can generate, and how many people live there. You see, it's, it's so easy. More to come. Now, today is the Women's March Day. There is one here in San Francisco. I can't even get to it. Kind of in an out-of-the-way place. It would work good in the weekday, but on the weekend there's nobody there, so I'm not really sure how well that's going to work. But maybe uh, you can contribute somehow to the Women's March 2020. I appreciate all your comments that you guys leave, your ups, your downs, and remember, support the community, the environmental community around the net. And until next time.